What's going on YouTube? What's going on Giants fans and family? Thanks for tuning in again, but if this is your first time checking out the channel, please think about hitting the like or subscribe button to be notified the next time we make videos like this. I promise you that, <laughs> that's, that's where I hate prank videos, but I couldn't help it with this one. I promise you something like this won't happen to you if you hit the like or subscribe button, or maybe it will if you don't. It's your call. Without further ado, let's get to the video. So Giants fans, yes, as the season stands, we still stink. Yes, as the season stands, I have drank a lot of tequila and wine for our losses and subsequent sorrow. But all is not yet lost. Uh, uh, maybe so we are now one and six and facing one of our most daunting tasks of the season we're going up against the five and two bucks coming into the next week which is week eight we are on now um and tom brady is looking a lot like tom brady and he's has he has the bucks like rolling on their way to the playoffs i did not foresee this i did not think the bucks would be five and two at this point i did not think brady would look this good and even gronk is starting to show signs of you know, a shadow of the old Gronk. So we do have a very daunting task ahead of us, but we actually do fare very well whenever we seem to play against Tom Brady. So I am hanging my head on that. Now, all is not lost though. The season still continues and we still have a chance to make something happen because everybody else in our division stinks. Everybody by this time knows it. The Cowboys just lost to the Redskins. The Redskins it might be no they're not in number one in the division the eagles are with the tie on their record i think at two four and one the redskins are at two and five cowboys at two and five and then we stand lowly one and six but i still think we're potentially better than all of those teams now i want to talk about a couple of moves that the giants made recently now we made a good trade in letting go of marcus golston i think that was another like uh, a feathering and dave gettleman's cap Signed Marcus, Marcus Goldston for a very short, I mean, a very uh, low cost deal. I think he was costing us about $4.2 million for the season. And now we flipped him subsequently into a six round pick. Now, six round picks are, you know, like what is a six round pick? A six round pick is a six round pick. It's a draft pick that we could potentially add, bundle with another pick to maybe move up in the draft. So it adds to our draft capital. So that I think was a, a favorable move. Marcus Golson wasn't really showing us much. I think he had maybe like a, a one full sack. I think he got two half a sacks on the season. Uh, Kyler Fackrell was outshining him, even though they play on opposite sides of the field. I think we could easily replace his productivity, which his productivity was minimal, even though we are thin at offense at, at outside linebacker. But I think that was a really good move. But now for the move that I wanted to talk about and the reason why I'm doing this quick video is the move that I've been waiting for. I've been asking for Rice and John sightings. I was wondering where Rice and Don was at and now I know we just signed him over to our practice squad so I'm super happy about that. Maybe this ends uh, or this shows the end of the Evan Ingram fiasco that we've been going through the last couple of seasons with the injuries and all the drops. We know this season he has at least cost us one game but I think potentially two. He's called Daniel Jones to have a fumble on his on his you know his resume, another interception. He has not been doing us any favors with all his speed and all his talent. The man can't catch the ball. I really did say in one of my previous videos or maybe I was talking to a friend I don't think Evan Ingram's problem is in his hand I think Evan Ingram needs glasses I mean pretty sure he wears contacts because I actually know a friend of it well a, a, yeah I guess I could say a friend of his guy that went to high school and played football with him in high school and said Evan Ingram always wore glasses so he wore glasses throughout high school and college so I guess now he's wearing contacts I think he needs to check his prescription because when you see a lot of balls go off a guy's fingertips I think that's more of a depth perception issue than a hands issue. The ball is rarely hitting him on the hands. It's almost like you see instances where he's clutching the for the ball a moment too soon. I think the man needs glasses. Now, maybe the other team will get into an optometrist and maybe we could have did that and maybe the season would be different, but hopefully the Giants signing Rice and John to the practice squad and cutting the center that they did to make way for him on the practice squad shows that maybe we'll have Rice and John coming up for us in the next coming weeks. I am hoping upon hope that we get an injection of some type of something in the receiving game. Bring the guy on. Give him a shot. You know, Evan Ingram couldn't block either. If we got Caden Smith as our blocking tight end and we get another threat, jump ball, deep threat, I was so excited for us picking up this guy in free agency at 6'7", you know, with some size and, and, and with a little speed. 
I would love to be able to see what Rice and John can do. I am so happy that the Giants have now signed him to the practice squad so nobody else can pick him up. Hopefully he's on the team within the next coming weeks. You know, hopefully he gets a shot. We got a long week coming up. Hopefully he gets a shot Monday night, maybe, because we play against the Buccaneers on Monday night. I really just wanted to come to you with this quick video and say, listen, guys, all hope is not yet lost. Yeah, it's hard for me to say that. Hello, darkness, my old friend. But <laughs> all hope is not yet lost. Even if we lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, dare I say it, which I believe we will, but we are trending up. And even if we lose, this is gonna sound crazy. Even if we lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we still got a shot at winning the division. Is that crazy? No. Ah. What's up guys, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, remember you can click my face here to subscribe here to watch more videos. And I think I'm gonna get it right this time.